entrance antiphon. Let us have no fear in approaching the throne of grace to receive mercy, alleluia. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, God speaks to us through the sacred scriptures. In the first reading, Lydia had her heart opened by the Lord to St. Paul. May our hearts be opened to the Lord through the Blessed Virgin Mary. In order to worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We address God the Father, Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. We address God the Son, Christ have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We address God the Holy Spirit, Lord have, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Father, you have given us the mother of your son to be our mother also. Grant us that by obeying the appeals of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may always work through prayer and penance for the kingdom of God and attain eternal happiness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Sailing from Troas, we made a straight run for Samothrace, the next day for Neapolis, and from there for Philippi, a Roman colony and the principal city of that particular district of Macedonia. After a few days, in this city, we went along the river outside the gates as it was the Sabbath, and this was a customary place for prayer. We sat down and preached to the women who had come to the meeting. One of these women was called Lydia, a devout woman from the town of Taitira, who was in the purple dye trade. She listened to us, and the Lord opened her heart to accept what Paul was saying. After she and her household had been baptized, she sent us an invitation. If you really think me a true believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay with us. And she would take no refusal. This is the word of the Lord. Our response, the Lord takes delight in his people. Sing a new song to the Lord, his praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in its maker. Let Zion's sons exult in their king. 
The Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the poor with salvation. Let the faithful rejoice in their glory, shout for joy and take their rest. Let the praise of God be on their lips. This honor is for all his faithful. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. It was ordained that the Christ should suffer and rise from the dead and so enter into his glory. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, when the advocate comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who, who issues from the Father, he will be my witness, and you too will be my witnesses, because you have been with me from the outset. I have told you all this so that your faith may not be shaken. They will ex expel you from synagogues. And indeed, the hour is coming when anyone who kills you will think he is doing a holy duty for God. They will do these things because they have never known either the Father or myself. But I have told you this so that when the time for it comes, you may remember that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. When the Advocate comes, whom I shall send from the Father, Jesus is teaching us who God is. Who is God for you? Jesus is teaching us the nature of God in John's gospel especially, but especially here in chapter 15. This verse has influenced the Nicene Creed when we say the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. It's a great honor for me to be here, to be celebrating this Holy Mass, at this place, the Chapel of the Apparitions where Our Lady appeared to teach us who God is and how the world has gone astray and how we can save the world. How can we save the world? By living the life of Jesus Christ, by living a godly life. And so Jesus says, when the Advocate comes, who I shall send. The Advocate is the third person of the Trinity, equal with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so, who is the Holy Spirit? Next Sunday, we celebrate the Ascension, which marks 40 days after Jesus rose from the dead. The following Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. Well, actually, this Thursday is Ascension Thursday. Nine days later is Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. And that's where the apostles were transformed by receiving the power of God, the Holy Spirit. And that's what God wants to do with us. So God is always sending people. The first person of a trinity is God the Father. As we say in the creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. He is the principle, the origin. And God the Father sends his son, the word who was made flesh through the flesh of Mary, the immaculate flesh of Mary. He entered her womb like light through glass, the perpetual virginity of Mary. She's conceived immaculately in the womb of her mother, Saint Anne. She's perpetual virgin before, during, and after birth. And she's assumed into heaven. And so Christ came through a woman under the law, as St. Paul says. And so the Father sends the Son. Jesus walked the earth for 30 years at home in Nazareth. And for three years, doing three kinds of miracles in the Holy Land. 
And then when it came time for him to show his great love, for God so loved the world that anyone who believes in him shall not be lost but have everlasting life. You will live forever and ever. But the important thing is we have to pray that we make it to heaven. Like St. Paul says, work out your salvation in fear and trembling. Stay close to Jesus through Mary. When Jesus came, when the Word, who always existed, the Son of God, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, before the world was created, the Word was made flesh, St. John says. And then Jesus Christ comes through Mary. In His humanity from Mary, His divinity from Father. So we believe in one God. The second person of a trinity is Jesus Christ. And He has two natures, truly God and truly man, as we say in the Creed. And then the Father and the Son, they both send the Holy Spirit. And this is, we say, the spiration, Pentecost, the sanctifier, the advocate, the spirit of the Father, the paraclete, the love between the Father and the Son. So when God knows himself, when the Father knows himself, he knows himself through the Word, the Son of God, through whom all things were made. Everything was made through Jesus Christ. So when you use your words, you are like the eternal generation of God the Father generating His Son. And so this is why we call the Word was made flesh, the incarnation, Jesus Christ. So by using your words, you are like Jesus. And when you love, you are using the Holy Spirit, the third person. And so when we make the sign of the cross, we pray that we might love the Lord God with all our minds. This is like the Father, thought, the intellect. And then the Father knows His Son. We use words, the procession from the Father, the Son is generated eternally. When we use words, that's like the eternal procession. We believe in God the Father with all of our mind. We believe in God the Son with all of our heart. And we love God with all of our strength. We touch our shoulders. Because this is what God, who is love, He wants our love. So the Father sends the Son. And then the Father and the Son send the Holy Spirit. And then the three persons of a trinity send our mother to us. And this is what this place is. This place is a place of Mary's maternal love for us. When children are in trouble, when they're in danger, the mother runs to them. And Mary has run to us here when the dangers of the First World War were ravaging souls. And the first time mankind has seen such great destruction on a massive worldwide scale. And Mary has come to teach us, to teach us to pray, to suffer, to love. And before Mary came, the Trinity and Mary sent the angel of peace, the angel of Fatima, to teach them those beautiful prayers, that pardon prayer, that beautiful prayer we beg pardon, that disposes us, disposes our mind and our hearts our memory and our imagination, our very fiber of our being, and all our strength to receive God like Lydia in the first reading. Lydia was opened by the Lord. Her spirit was open to receive the teaching of St. Paul. Are we open to receive Mary's message of praying for sinners, offering sacrifices for the conversion of souls, praying for the conversion of Russia and the conversion of the world, to do what Mary wants us to do. Imitate Jesus. Listen to him. The first wedding, the, the wedding feast of Cana. So let us not, like in the Bible says, when Jesus says, I have told you this, so your faith may not be shaken. I mean, we have the faith of Mary. If a, if a war comes, if they persecute us like they are so many Christians in Africa, in the Middle East, throughout the world, the unborn being persecuted. When they persecute us thinking they're doing something good. And that is happening today. They will expel you from synagogues. And indeed the hour is coming. When anyone who kills you will think he is doing a holy duty for God. Killing innocent life is not a holy duty. It's the opposite of good. It's evil. And Mary has shielded us. Taught us how to protect ourselves from evil. I, they will do these things. They have never known either the Father or myself. But I have told you this so that when the time comes, you may remember 
what I told you. Let us remember what Mary says. Most souls are lost in the fires of hell because of sins of the flesh. Let us pray for purity of souls, that the addictions of pornography, drug use, substance abuse, that mankind will no longer abuse one another will turn into love. And this will come by listening, remembering what Jesus taught us. Because he says, I will send the advocate and he will teach you all things. He will call to your mind everything I taught you. So dear friends, when you leave here, you go back home. Study your faith. Love your faith. Use all of your strength, your memory, your imagination to know the scriptures, to read. Begin reading John's gospel. Begin praying the rosary if you don't already every single day, even 20 decades a day. Pray the chapel of divine mercy. Pray that prayer, the pardon prayer. My God, pray with me. My God, I believe, I adore, I trust, and I love thee. And I beg pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not trust, and do not love thee. And that beautiful Fatima prayer, which Mary said to say at the end of each decade, do we know what we are saying? Do we remember to whom we are speaking? We, speak, we are speaking to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this is why we speak through Mary, because Jesus came through a woman. And we should imitate Jesus by going perfectly through a woman to Him. Many souls do not understand a mother's love. What is a child in the world without a mother, without a father, an orphan? St. James says, this is perfect religion, taking care of the orphans and the widows and keeping yourself unspotted from the world, keeping yourself clean and pure, full of faith, hope, charity, humility, and purity by having the life of Mary within your soul. And so, now, whatever you have in your hearts, place on this altar. Unite everything you have and you need with Jesus through Mary. Because this is what the Mass is. The Mass is the offering of Jesus Christ to His Heavenly Father in the Holy Spirit. And there's no greater prayer. So we attach ourselves to Mary that she might attach ourselves to her Son. And then our, our Lord Jesus takes us to the Father by the power of a sanctifier, the advocate, the Spirit of the Father, the Spirit of truth, the paraclete, God, the Holy Ghost the sanctifier, the one that makes us holy. And so how do we do this? Through Mary. I close with this, my dear brothers and sisters. Let us ask Mary to teach us to pray, to really, really open our hearts to the Holy Spirit, which she conceived in her immaculate womb and gave us the greatest gift, the humanity of the sacred heart of Jesus and no wonder why the statue of Jesus is there opening up his sacred heart to us. And so we run to our mother like St. Jacinta and St. Francisco, like Sister Lucia and the millions of pilgrims who have come here looking for strength, for consolation, for hope in a world that wants to spread despair, a world that wants to snuff out joy and bring sadness, a world that wants to spread hatred and communism and destroy human life, promote an atheistic way of life. For Mary has come to remind us you are not alone. God is with you to the end of time. Mary is here. Mary is everywhere where her son is, especially in the Holy Eucharist. And remember, she has told her mystics, I am more present and longer at Mass than any other place I have appeared. So when you go home, spend time with the Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament, the throne of mercy. Spend time with our Lord. He says in the garden, could you not keep watch with me for one hour? Do not be afraid. Take courage and believe. Have hope and trust. My dear friends, let us run to our mother now with that beautiful prayer which reminds us the first time she heard it that brought joy to her immaculate heart that she was a mother of the Messiah, the mother of Jesus Christ the mother of God and our mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. We invite you to please stand as we offer our prayers of the faithful. Here at this sacred spot where the Most Holy Virgin Mary appeared, let us all present our prayers to God the Father, who gave us the mother of his Son to be our mother. For all the faithful that by obeying the appeals of Mary in a spirit of true penance and prayer, they may work wholeheartedly for the renewal of the world and for the kingdom of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who exercise sacred ministry in the church, that they be attentive to the word of God, love it and proclaim it with fidelity and enthusiasm as Mary did, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who govern nations, that they may work for justice and peace in the world and harmoniously collaborate in the just distribution of earthly goods among all the inhabitants of the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer, that in the union with Mary, consoler of the afflicted, in the loving care of others, and in the contemplation of the cross of Christ, that they may find courage to face life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here present and for our families, for our nation, for our city, that by the intercession of Mary, those who seek Christ may find him, sinners may be converted, young people may open their hearts with enthusiasm to the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the many intentions of the Blessed Virgin Mary. May her plan be fulfilled. We pray to the Lord. God of infinite goodness, attend to the supplication of your people and with the prayers of Mary, mother of your son and mother of the church, to help us listen to our pleas and increase our faith. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your son, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The corporal was laid down to represent the shroud which wrapped the dead body of Jesus when he came down from the cross. The pall represents the crown of thorns which crowns a chalice. We now offer the bread which symbolizes all of us in our prayers and sacrifices. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It shall become for us the bread of life. The two liquids, water and wine, represent the two natures of Christ. The wine represents his divinity, the water his humanity. The priest adds wine with a little bit of water and says, may the mixing of this water and wine help us to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It shall become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, Lord God. May our sacrifice in this sight be pleasing to you, Lord God. The priest washes his hands for three reasons to remind us Pontius Pilate washed his hands of Jesus when he said, I am innocent of this man's blood. The second reason, the beatitude, blessed are the pure of heart, 
They shall see God, the importance to pray for purity. And lastly, thirdly, so the priest's hands are clean for the beautiful sacrifice of the Mass. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, we offer you these gifts in reparation and of praise, so that in celebrating this feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary, you may absolve us from our sins and guide our wavering hearts. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name in veneration of the Blessed Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without law losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, their most merciful Father, make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern throughout the whole world. Together, your servant Francis, our Pope, and Antonio, our Bishop, and all those holding on to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise. For they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls in the hope of health and well-being. And paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious of our Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, Cosmos and Damien, in all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayer, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and accept as we come for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave a chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased, look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim, in humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command these gifts be borne by the hands of your angel, of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who this participation in your altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord, amen. To us also, your servants, who are those sinners, and with hands extended, sorry, who are those sinners who in your abundant mercy graciously grant sonship and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs. We join the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, and Anastasia. And all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their own company, not wearing our own merits, but granting us your own pardon through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Jesus Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other's side of peace. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Union Antiphon from the cross, Jesus said to his mother, this is your son. Then to the disciple, he said, this is your mother. Let us pray. Lord, having received you with joy in these heavenly sacraments, grant us, we pray you, that they may lead us to eternal life, where we may rejoice forever with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, and the mother of her church. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I will now bless all religious objects. You don't have to bring them out. All the things you purchase, rosaries, scapulars, medals. To the session of Blessed Virgin Mary, Lady of Fatima, may God bless you and all your religious objects. In nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.